no one reading this or listening to this should, if they're, you know, a, a very a poor person should take their hard earned savings and go and put it all into crypto. But there are a lot of misconceptions around this uh, as an investment opportunity. What would you say to South Korean president-elect Yoon Song yeol Well, the first thing I would say is he should invite me to come over and <laughs> spend a few hours with him telling him what to do. Having said that, <laughs> um, Korea needs a national blockchain strategy. This technology can transform the operations of government. Mm. But it's not just government, it's governance. You could be using blockchain to transform the nature of democracy by Things like having a smart vote. You vote just not for the politician. You vote for their program and a smart contract. And this makes politicians accountable to citizens. Thirdly, you need to change the regulatory environment. The number one impediment to all of this happening in the world is government regulation in almost every country in the world. Now, there's a much bigger issue here, which is a whole other conversation. <laughs> that blockchain can transform government's ability to collect and manage taxes. Payroll tax. If payroll is on a blockchain, there's no need to calculate payroll tax. I am your employer. I pay you. The blockchain, the smart contract, automatically ca calculates the tax and sends it to government. Eliminates any tax fraud having to do with payroll tax overnight could be done. So all taxes will move to this platform. The next thing I would say is you need to build a hub. Could be Seoul, but there I've been to other cities in Korea that a lot of really good things are happening. China is building out six or seven hubs and they're investing billions of dollars. Um, that's one thing the president elect should do is set up a task force in the central bank and others and take action towards creating a digital fiat currency, the digital yuan. China is doing this. Its central bank digital currency is being rolled out across Southeast Asia, into Africa, across the One Belt, One Road Initiative. If this continues at the rate it is, China will replace the, the Chinese RMB, or its digital currency called the DCEP, will replace the US dollar as the currency of record. So it's very important that large economies in Asia, and I think of Korea and Japan being the two, wake up and understand that this is a big opportunity and central bankers could benefit hugely. You know, you put money into the economy, you could have transparency and see where it goes. People are spending, they're investing, they're saving. You could have a lighter touch on regulation. You have a crisis like a pandemic, you need to, give money to everyone in the population, you, you helicopter drop it onto their mobile devices. So it's a critical sector, but it's much more than a sector. Mm -hmm. It's the basis of all sectors. And blockchain could transform companies like Samsung or Hyundai or um, LC or Kia or in the financial sector, like, like KB Financial Group. As you just said, uh, blockchain technology is like a basis for all sectors and regardless of any sectors or any industries companies left and right are jumping onto this blockchain i don't want to say bandwagon but blockchain wave they're hoping to ride on it and what uh what should they know before they actually get into this what's my advice for an entrepreneur or company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um well, the first one, <laughs> first your earlier question, is don't just think about building crypto assets, okay? Or don't even think about building a blockchain platform. I mentioned that you have good ones already in Korea. Mm -hmm. um, think about infrastructure for this technology for transforming supply chains or transforming manufacturing or transforming all the different elements of financial services. This is called DeFi, decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in Korea, many people know the word FinTech, 
FinTech, <laughs> FinTech is like this big. DeFi is this big. FinTech is silly. FinTech mm -hmm. is just putting a new coat of paint on the old building. Mm -hmm. It's like dig digital wallpaper. Think about DeFi as using software and this technology to replace everything that banks do to the benefit of customers and the economy and therefore governments. Are we heading into the right direction with the blockchain technology or do we need a wake up call at this point as to kind of be cautious about all these overheated investment friends? Should we be cautious? Of course. Mm -hmm. Right now, the focus is on investment in digital assets. You mentioned cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. but currencies are one of many, many types of digital assets as all assets are becoming digital. The main asset class of the digital age is data. And you create it, I create it. We all mm -hmm. create it, but it gets expropriated from us by these digital conglomerates, these massive social media, Google and technology companies that own the asset class. and. Research estimates that there are a billion and a half people in the world, if they could own their own data, they could double their income. If you're an investor, well, this is all a bubble. You know what? Since around 2012, mm -hmm. people have been saying this is all a bubble. That was 10 years ago. Well, I suppose it is a bubble in the sense that it's way down right now. So is the stock market. And right now it sort of parallels the stock market, mm -hmm. crypto as an asset class, at least in North America. Now, um, so of course you need to be cautious. Of course, this will be very volatile. No one reading this or listening to this should, if they're you know, a, a very a poor person should take their hard earned savings and go and put it all into crypto. Right, right. But, but the, the, there are a lot of misconceptions around this. Uh, as an investment opportunity. What do you think about the uh, metaverse and NFTs? They're both based on the blockchain technology. The metaverse was an idea in waiting. It was an idea whose time had not come. And you, it was waiting for blockchain. Because with blockchain, in a virtual world, you can have a real currency now. Mm, yeah, yeah. You can have NFTs that represent digital goods, like a car or a piece of art or a farm or whatever. And you can also, in a metaverse, if we do this right, we may not, you can have the data that's generated be collected by the people who generate the data. And we could create a self-sovereign identity for people in the metaverse that would teach us a lot about creating a self-sovereign identity in the physical world. So I, I'm uh, quite excited about the metaverse. There are many, many problems. Will it be a very hierarchical environment? Will it be sexist? Will Facebook run it in, North Amer in, in, in the Western world? If Facebook runs the metaverse, that's a very frightening idea. We need a decentralized metaverse where people can own their own data. You said uh, South Korea has the potential to become the next or the second Silicon Valley. Could you uh, elaborate on that and tell us more about it? Well, here's the idea that for the first era of the digital age, it had a center in the mm -hmm. world called Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving into a second era, an internet of value but all kinds of other technologies, AI, the internet of things, autonomous vehicles, um, you know, drones, robots, technology in our bodies. This is a whole new era. Where will that be based? I don't think it's going to be Silicon Valley. Now it won't just be one location. You know, I mentioned that the government of China is investing in these centers. There are uh, areas like Dubai, the, uh, where companies are using the technology uh, internally. Portugal has now adopted all kinds of legislation that enables it 
very easy to do important crypto things in, can in, in Portugal. So what's Korea going to do? Well, Korea actually has a whole bunch of great assets. You've got a strong history of innovation. You've got a government that invests in innovation and seems to, over the years, up and down, but ha has an openness. I've met with government leaders, and I'm always struck by how curious they are and how much uh, they want to learn. You have a great uh, educated population. You have great computer science. It's not fully into this area yet, but it, it could be. You have um, wonderful entrepreneurship that's, that's happening right now. You have huge, massive corporations that are very strong in technology that are starting to show interest in this technology. These are all the ingredients. All you need is a good regulatory environment. And these are all the ingredients that you need where you can become a global hub. And if you do, you think Korea did well in the first era of the digital age? Korea could be infinitely more successful in the second era if you can find the leadership to do it. And it's very exciting that you have a new president. And I very much hope that he's a curious person and that he wants to learn more. And we'd certainly be pleased to help.